Hi, good day. Welcome to the course. On this video lecture, we will be talking about the building block approach model in network design. So topic outline on this video lecture includes the introduction about the building block approach in network design. We'll be also talking about the traditional network design. Okay, so the building block approach which covers three phases. These are needs analysis, which covers geographic scope, application systems, network users, categorizing network needs, and the deliverables of the phase. On the second phase, we will be talking about the technology design. This includes designing clients and servers, designing circuits and devices, network design tools, and the deliverables of the phase. And the last one is, we will be talking about cost assessment, which includes request for proposal, selling the proposal to the management, and the deliverables. All right, so let's get started. So the objectives of this video lecture is for you to be familiar with the process of designing and implementing the network. So be familiar with techniques for developing a logical network design and developing a physical network design and be familiar of course with the network design principles all right so let's talk about the introduction okay so all but the smallest organizations have networks which means that most network design projects are the design of upgrades or extensions to existing networks rather than construction of the entirely new networks even the network for an entire new building is likely to be integrated with organization's existing backbone. Or nonetheless, the network design is very challenging. Okay, so the traditional network design follows a very structured systems analysis and design process similar to that used in building the applications. Okay. First, the network design meets with a user to identify the needs and application systems planned for the network. Second, the analyst develops a precise estimate of the amount of data that each user will send and receive, uses this estimate the total amount of traffic on each part of the network. Next is the analysts design circuits needed to support this traffic plus a modest increase in traffic are designed and cost estimates are obtained from vendors. Okay. And finally, a year or two years later, the network is built and implemented. So this is the traditional network design. Okay. So this traditional process, although expensive and time consuming, works well for static and slow evolving networks. So unfortunately, networking today is significantly different from what it was when the traditional process was developed. So three forces are making the traditional process less appropriate for many of today's network. So first, the underlying technology for the client and server computers, networking devices, and the circuits themselves is changing very rapidly. So in the early 1990s, mainframes dominates the network. The typical client computer was an 8 MHz 386 with 1 MB of RAM and 40 MB of hard disk space. And a typical circuit was 9600 BPS or bit per second mainframe connection or a 1 Mbps LAN. So today, client computers and servers are significantly more powerful and circuit speeds of 100 Mbps and 1 gigabit per second are common. We also have this 10G or even 100G or 100 gigabit per second. We now have more processing capacity and the network capacity than ever before. So both are no longer scarce commodities that we need to manage carefully, okay? So second, you've got network traffic is growing rapidly, 
Okay, so the growth of traffic is immense. The challenge is not in estimating today's users' demand, but in estimating its uh, rate of growth. In the past, network demand essentially was driven by predictable business systems such as order processing. So today, much network demand is driven by less predictable user behavior such as email and the web. Many experts expect the rapid increase in network demand to continue especially as a video, voice, and multimedia applications becomes a commonplace on network. So a 10% growth rate user demand on a given network will increase by one third in three years. So at 20%, it will increase by about 75% in three years. So at 30%, it will double in less than three years. So a minor mistake in estimating the growth or the rate can lead to major problems. With such rapid growth, it is no longer possible to accurately predict network needs for most networks. So in the past, it was not. Okay. And finally, the balance of cost have changed dramatically over the past 10 years. In the early 1990s, the most expensive item in a network was the hardware or circuits, devices, and servers. Okay, so today, the most expensive part of the network is the staff members who design, operate, and maintain it. So, as the costs have shifted, the emphasis in network design is no longer on minimizing hardware costs, although it is important. So, the emphasis today is on designing networks to reduce the staff time needed to operate them. Okay, so the traditional process minimizes the equipment cost by tailoring the equipment to a careful assessment of needs but often results in a mismatch of different devices with different cap uh, capabilities and capacities. So two resulting problems are the staff members need to learn to operate and maintain different devices and that it often takes longer to perform network management activities because each device may use slightly different software okay so for instance in reality today in the network so we have the hybrid of different brands and therefore you have to train your staff okay so to operate to configure and to maintain these devices for example your company is using Cisco networks on the core, okay, and maybe Juniper or HP, okay, on the distribution, and something like uh, Dell, okay, maybe on the access level. So today, the cost of the staff is one more expensive and it's far expensive than the cost of the equipment. Thus, the traditional process can lead to a false economy save money now in equipment okay so but pay much more over the long term in staff costs okay all right so let's talk about the building black approach now so some organizations still use the traditional process of network design so particularly to those applications for which hardware or network circuits are usually expensive. Example, ones that cover long distances through many different countries or regions within the country. However, many other organizations now use a simpler approach to network design that will be called building block approach or the building block process. So the key concept in the building block process is that networks that use few standard components throughout the network are cheaper in the long run than networks that use a variety of different components on a different parts of the network. So rather than attempting to accurately predict users traffic on the network and build networks to meet those demands, the building block process instead starts with few standard components and uses them over and over again. So even if they provide more capacity that is needed, the goal is simplicity of the design. Okay, so this strategy is sometimes called narrow and deep because a very narrow range of technologies and devices is used over and over again. So very deeply throughout the organization. So the results are a simple or simpler design process 
and a more easily managed network built with a smaller range of components. So let's get into the details of the building block network design. Okay, so in this topic, we will focus on the building block process to network design. Okay, and the basic network design process involves three steps that are performed repeatedly. Okay, so these are the needs analysis, technology design, and cost assessment. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the network design here. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, so there are three phases in the network design. And these are the needs analysis, technology design, and cost assessment. So this process begins with needs analysis, during which the designer attempts to understand the fundamental current and future network needs of various users, departments, and applications. So this is likely to be educated guess at best, okay? So users and applications are classified as typical or high volume, okay? So specific technology needs are identified. Example, the ability to dial in with the current modern technologies, okay? So that's part of the needs analysis. Now on the technology design, okay, let's talk about technology design here. So this is the next step. This examines the available technologies and assesses which options will meet users' needs. The designer makes some estimates about the network needs for every category of users and circuits in terms of the current technology. Okay, so because the basic network design is general, it can easily be changed as needs and technologies change. So the difficulty, of course, lies in predicting user demands so one can define technologies needed. So most organizations solve this by building more capacity than they expect to need and by designing networks that can easily grow and then closely monitoring growth so that they expand the network ahead of the growth pattern. Okay, And the last one is cost assessment. Okay, so this is the third step, cost assessment, the relative costs of the technologies are considered. Okay, and in reality, the team who is responsible for needs analysis is a different team who makes the technology design from the other team who made cost assessment. So we have different teams working on these spaces. Okay, so being an IT professional, Okay, so for instance, you are part of the technology design team. So you will be working only under technology design. All right. Okay, so the process then cycles back to the needs analysis. So for instance, from the last page presented earlier, so you are already on the cost assessment. Okay, so if there would be some considerations again, so that would be cycle back to the needs analysis, which is refined using the technology and cost information to produce new assessment of users' needs. So this in turn triggers changes in the technology design and cost assessment and so on. So by cycling these three processes, the final network design is settled as shown here. So for instance, let's have an example in here. Under needs analysis, Basically, for instance, you need to construct or to upgrade the network or the current network infrastructure of your organization. Okay. And then the technology design team proposes specific brands, for instance, Cisco. Okay. And then after that, after preparing all the specifications on the design, uh, on the technology design, it was submitted to the cost assessment team and find out or found out that the cost is too high, okay? So it would cost too much. That is why it was forwarded again to the needs analysis system to do some adjustments and refinement, okay? So the needs analysis system will forward it back to the technology design and consider the comment of the cost assessment team that the cost is higher, okay? So therefore, it will be reconsidered by technology design by proposing maybe 
a not too technical or it's not too high tech okay so devices so maybe we have to consider other brands okay so with cheaper costs okay and then it will be forwarded again to the cost assessments team but then if there is a problem okay for instance for the budget okay so we have the budget constraint it will be forwarded back again to the needs analysis team and so on so if there is an agreement now okay so we are okay with this we are good with this we are within the budget according to the cost assessment team then we have come up with a final network design okay so it will be forwarded to the technology design team to come up with a final network design based on the budget approved by the cost assessment team okay so that's how it works okay so let's dig in into detail about these three pieces so let's start with the needs analysis okay so analyze the needs of the network users along with the requirements of the network applications just like starting with the software development we need to start with needs analysis so the goal of needs analysis is to understand why the network is being built and what users and applications it will support so in many cases the network is being designed to improve poor performance or enable new applications to be used in other cases the network is upgraded to replace unreliable or aging equipment or to standardize equipment so that only one type of equipment, one protocol, or one vendor's equipment is used everywhere in the network. Okay? Next, often the goal of network design are slightly different between LANs and backbones or BNs on the hand or on one hand and months and ones on the other in LAN and backbone network environment the organization owns and operates the equipment and the circuits so once they are paid for they are or there are no traditional or additional charges for usage however if major changes must be made the organization will need to spend additional funds in this case most network designers tend to err on the side of the building okay so too big a network okay so that is building more capacity than they expect to need okay next is so at the man one level circuits are list and upgrades involve determining if capacity increases are needed so basically this man and one is beyond the control of the organization okay so it is uh, being controlled by the isp or the internet service provider so um, in contrast in most man and ones the organization leases circuits from the common carrier and pays for them on a monthly or per use basis so understanding capacity becomes more important in this situation so because uh, additional capacity comes at a noticeable cost okay so in this case most network designers tends to err on side of the building that is too much all right so there's a problem with that one okay but it is much more difficult to cancel a long-term contract for the capacity that they are not using okay so much of the needs analysis may already have been done before most network design projects today are network upgrades rather than the design of the entirely new networks okay so it is important to gain an understanding of the current operations application systems and messages so this step provides a baseline against which future design requirements can be gauged it, it should be or it should provide a clear picture of the present network if one exists okay so existing costs and user management needs whether the network is a new network or a network upgrade so the primary objective of this stage is to define first geographic scope of the network and the users and applications that will use it 
Okay. So basically, the goal of the niche analysis is to produce a logical network design. Okay. And well, when you say logical network design, this is a statement of the network elements needed to meet the needs of the organization. So the logical design does not specify technologies or products to be used. Okay, so take note of that. On the needs analysis, we do not specify the brands. There is no branding. Also in the technology design. So when we prepare the needs analysis and technology design, there should be no brand that is to be mentioned. All right. So do not specify brands. You specify only the general specifications of the device. All right. So instead, it focuses on the fundamental functionality needed, such as high speed access network or access to the network, which the technology design stage will be translated into specific technologies. All right. Now, before that, let's move on to the geographic scope. Okay. So the first step in needs analysis is to break the network into three conceptual parts on the basis of the geographic and logical scope. Okay. So these are the access layer, the distribution layer, and the core layer. So as first discussed in the next topic, so the access layer is the technology that is closest to the user. This is the work area on the EIA TIA wiring standard. Okay. So access layer is within the work area. Okay. Next. So how about the distribution layer? The distribution layer is basically the telecommunication closets wherein all the switches used for distribution, okay, so would it be layer two or layer three switches, is placed. So we call it the distribution layer, the telecommunication closets. And the core layer, which includes the equipment room, and sometimes your backbone is also considered to be a core layer, okay, so which interconnects. The different distribution layer all right so within each part of the network the network designer must identify some technical constraint for example if the access layer is a man in that the users need to connect to the network over the broadband connection this provides some constraints on the technologies to be used so one could not use 100 base t ethernet for example likewise if the access layer is a LAN, it would be silly to consider using T1 circuits. All right. So, of course, if it is an access layer, we are using the UTP cable or the 100 base T Ethernet. Okay. If it is on a MAN, well, basically the end users are connected directly to the Internet. Okay. So, sometimes the current network infrastructure also imposes constraints. For example, if we are adding a new building to an existing office complex, that used 100 base T in the access layer lands, then we will probably choose to use uh, 100 base T for the access layer in the new building. As such constraints are noted. Okay. So it is easiest to start with the highest level. So most designers begin by drawing a network diagram for any ones with international or countrywide locations that must be connected. So a diagram that shows the logical network design going between the locations is sufficient. So details such as the type of circuits, okay, connected to the one that's also drawn, usually in a series of separate diagrams, but for simple network, one diagram may be sufficient. Okay, so at this point, the designer gathers general information and characteristics of the environment in which the network must operate. So, for example, they determine whether there are any legal requirements such as local, state, provincial, federal, or international laws, or municipality or city regulations, or building codes that might affect the network. Okay, so that's the graphic scope. Okay, so for instance, referring to this diagram here, okay, so in this case, we have four different branches for the organization. So one is in Toronto, Chicago, New York, 
and Atlantic Canada. Okay. Now, this diagram here shows the initial drawing of a network design for an organization with offices in these four areas connected to the core network, which is a wide area network, or this is provided and controlled by the ISP or the Internet Service Provider. So the Toronto location, for example, okay, has distribution layer. So you've got a BN or a Barbo network connecting three distinct access layers LANs. So which could be three distinct LANs in the same office building. So Chicago also has a similar structure with the addition of the fourth access part that connects to the internet. All right. And the Atlantic Canada network design, okay, so has two distinct access layer parts, okay? One is a LAN, and the one is an access layer MAN using dial-up, okay? So the network or the New York section, so this one here, is more complex, having its own core network component, a backbone network connecting into the core one, which in turn supports three distribution layer BNs. So each of these supports several access layer LANs. Okay, so in network uh, design or in needs analysis, so a simple drawing like this can be used to describe the geographic scope of the project. Okay, so start with writing, for instance, branches, where is the main office, and then try to connect them, okay? So that's the objective of the geographic scope. Okay, so connecting your networks from different locations. Okay. Now, next is application systems. Okay. So once the basic geographic scope is identified, the designers must review the list of applications that will use the network and identify the location of each. So this should, uh, this information should be added to the emerging network diagrams. So this process is called baselining. So next, those applications that are expected to use the network in the futures are added. Okay. So in many cases, okay. So in many cases, the applications will be relatively well defined. Specific internal applications, for example, payroll or registrar systems for the university. And external applications like uh, web servers may already be part of the old network. So, however, it is important to review the organization's long range and short range plans concerning changes in the company goals. So, strategic plans, development plans for new products or services, projections of sales, research and development projects, major capital expenditures, what else? Uh, possible changes in product mix new offices that must be served by the communications network, security issues, okay, and future commitments to technologies. So for example, a major expansion in the number of offices or a major electronic commerce initiative will have a significant impact on the network requirements. Okay, so it is also helpful to identify the hardware and software. Okay. So um, this includes the software requirements, the hardware requirements for each applications that will use the network. And if possible, the protocol each application uses, example, HTTP, okay, so for the web access or HTTP over TCP IP, okay, so the Windows file access and so on. So all of this should be considered. So this knowledge helps now and will be particularly useful later when designers develop a technological solutions. All right. Okay. So let's talk about network users now. Who will be using the network you are designing? Okay. So in the past, application systems accounted for the majority of the network traffic. So today, much network traffic is produced by the discretionary use of the internet. Okay. So applications such as email and the web are generating significant traffic. So the network manager is no longer in total control of the network traffic generated on his or her networks. 
So this is likely to continue in the future as network hungry applications such as desktop video conferencing okay so become more common so therefore in addition to understanding the applications you must also assess the number and the type of users that will generate and receive network traffic and identify their location on the emerging network diagram okay so this is very important now so we have to know the users so who will be the end users of the systems that we are doing okay so that's part of the needs analysis okay and also we have to consider network upgrades okay so that will require understanding how the use of the new applications such as video will affect the network traffic okay next is categorizing network needs okay so at this point the network has been designed in terms of geographic scope the application systems and the users okay so the next step is to assess the relative amount of traffic generated in each part of the network so with a traditional design approach this involves considerable detailed analysis with a building block approach the goal is to provide some rough assessment of the relative magnitude of the network needs okay so each application system is assessed in general terms to determine the amount of network traffic it can be expected to generate today and in the future so compared with other applications likewise each user is categorized as either typical user or a high traffic users okay so we have to classify the users as typical or high traffic users so this assessment will be refined in the next stage of the design process okay so this assessment can be problematic but the goal is some relative understanding of the network needs okay so some simple rule of thumb can help for example applications that require large amounts of multimedia data for those that load executables over the network are likely to be high traffic applications okay so applications that are time sensitive or need sometimes constant update okay example financial information systems order processing enrollment system okay or the for instance that the lms used by the university okay are likely to be high traffic applications okay so once the network requirements have been identified they also should be organized into mandatory requirements desirable requirements and a wish list requirements so this information enables the development of a minimum level of mandatory requirements and a negotiable list of desirable requirements that are dependent on cost and availability so for example desktop video conferencing may be a wish list item right so but it will be omitted if it increases the cost of the network beyond what is desired okay so you have to have some add-ons you know so and then if this will not or if this will hamper or hinder the design then we can easily remove it from the list okay so at this point the local facility network diagrams are prepared okay so for a really large network there may be several levels for example the designer of the network in chicago atlantic canada and new york okay so we have we might have different designers there okay so conversely the designer might just add more detail okay and develop a separate more detailed diagrams for new york so the choice is up to the designer so provided that the diagrams and supporting text clearly explain the network needs okay so next is now now that we are done with needs analysis so we have to know the deliverables okay so what would be the output of this space okay so the key deliverable for the needs assessment stage is a set of logical network diagrams showing the applications circuits clients and servers in the proposed network so it's categorized as either 
typical or high traffic as we mentioned earlier. Okay, so the logical diagram is the conceptual plan of the network and does not consider the specific physical elements. Example, routers, switches, circuits that will be used to implement the network. Okay, so um, we have here a sample deliverable. Okay, so sample needs assessment. This is a LAN or local area network. Okay, so it shows the result of the needs analysis for one of the New York part of the network presented earlier. So the figure shows the distribution and access parts in the building with a series of six access LANs connected by the distribution or the backbone network, which in turn connected the campus area network core BN. Okay, so one of the six LANs is highlighted as a high traffic LAN, whereas the others are typical so three mandatory applications are identified that will be used by all network okay so these are email web and file sharing so one wish list in uh, requirement is the desktop video conferencing which is also identified for a portion of the network so if you will observe here this is the deliverable for the needs analysis. So after you have performed the thorough needs analysis, so you have to come up with this layout. So this is just basically a part of the network design. And this focus on the building design. Okay. So you've got the campus core backbone there. So if we are going to relate this into an EIA, TIA wiring standards that we have discussed on video one. Okay. So this campus core backbone here is your vertical cabling. And we also have the cable running on each of these uh, area here, the east and the west land, on every layer on every floor of the building. So that is via horizontal cable. Okay? So we can relate this on the first video by adapting the EIA or the TIA EIA wiring standards. And that should be observed also on the building black approach. All right? Okay, so now that we are done with needs analysis, let's talk about technology design. Okay, so this is the second phase of the building block approach. Okay, so once the needs have been defined in the logical network design, the next step is to develop a physical network design or a set of possible designs. Okay, so the physical network design starts with the client and server computers needed to support the users and the applications. So if the network is a new network, new computers will be needed. Okay. If the network is an existing network, the servers may need to be upgraded to the newest technology. Once these are designed, then the circuits and the devices connecting them are designed. Okay. So next is how about designing clients and servers? Okay. Now, the idea behind the building block approach is to specify the needs in terms of some standard units. Okay. So, typical users are allocated the base level client computers as server. Okay. Supporting typical applications. So, users and servers for applications needing a more powerful computers are assigned some advanced computers. Okay. Or the specifications. So as the specification for computers rapidly improve and cost drops usually every six months, okay? So today's typical user may receive a type of computer originally intended for the advanced user, okay? So when the network is actually implemented. And the advanced users may end up with a computer not available when the network was designed, okay? Next. Designing circuits and devices. So what do we have here? So the same is true with network circuits and devices. So hubs, routers, switches, okay, firewalls. These are interrelated decisions in designing network circuits and devices. So the fundamental technology and protocols, okay, so the capacity of each circuit, these are interrelated because each technology offers different circuit capacities. So when you say circuits and devices, we're talking about the transmission medium or the transmission media 
that is to be used on your network design. So these devices includes uh, end user devices. These are computers, printers, okay, uh, VoIP phones, okay, and intermediary devices. These are the network devices like routers, switches, uh, firewalls, bridges, and so on. So this is under this technology design base. Okay. Now designing the circuit capacity means capacity planning. Estimating the size and type of standard and advanced network circuits for each type of network. Okay, so for example, should the standard LAN circuit be shared or switched? Okay, say 100 base T. Likewise, should the standard backbone network circuit be 100 base T or 1 G, uh, GBPS or GBE or the gigabit Ethernet? Okay, so. This requirement of the current and future circuit loading, the amount of data transmitted on a circuit. Okay, so this analysis can focus on either the average circuit traffic or the peak circuit traffic. All right. So, for example, okay. So, for example, this analysis, okay, in an online banking network. Okay, so traffic volume peaks usually are in the mid-morning, okay, bank opening and just prior to closing. So airline and rental car reservations network designers look for peak volumes before and during the holidays or other vacation periods, whereas telephone companies normally have their highest peak volumes on Mother's Day, all right? So designing for peak circuit traffic is ideal, all right? So Valentine's Day, right? So or the Christmas Eve. So that's the times for the telecommunications that they experience heavy traffic because of the greetings, right? Okay. So how about the estimating circuit traffic? Okay. So the designer usually starts with the total characters transmitted per day on its circuit or if possible the maximum number of characters transmitted per two second interval if peaks must be met. Okay, so you can calculate message volumes by counting messages in a current network and applying some estimated growth rate. If an existing network is in place, network monitors or analyzers may be able to provide the actual circuit character, okay, or the count of it, okay of the volume transmitted per minute or per day so you don't have to manually do it all right so of course you have to use some tools available to make your process an automated one okay now a good rule of thumb is that 80 percent of the circuit loading information is easy to gather so the last 20 percent needed for a very precise estimate is extremely difficult and expensive to find so however Precision usually is not a major concern because of their stair-step nature of communication circuits and the need to project future needs. For example, the difference between 100 base T and 1 GBE is quite large. Okay, And assessing which level is needed for physical traffic does not require a lot of precision. So forecasts are inherently less precise than understanding the current network traffic okay so the turnpike effect is an expression that means that the traffic increases much faster than originally forecasted so it comes from the traffic forecasting that was done by or that was done for the construction of the early uh, interstate highways okay so when a new faster highway or network is built so people are more likely to use it than the old slow, okay, the slow or the old one, because it is available, it is very efficient and provides new capacities and capabilities, okay. So the annual growth factor for a network use may vary from 5 to 50% and in some cases may exceed 100% for high growth organization. So although no organization wants to overbuild the network, okay, and pay uh, more capacity than it needs, in most cases, upgrading the network costs 50 to 80%, okay, 
is a good choice. But being under capacity can cause significant problems. So given the rapid growth in network demand and the difficulty in accurately predicting, most organizations inten intentionally overbuilt okay, so their networks and most end up using this supposedly unneeded capacity for the next three years. Okay, so well, some are using or overbuilding the network, but some it's fine. Okay, next network design tools. Okay, so it can perform a number of functions to help in the technology design process. The network modeling and design tools can perform a number of functions to help in the technology design process. Okay. So with most tools, the first step is to enter a diagram or a model of an existing network or proposed network design. So some modeling tools require the users to create the network diagram from the scratch. So that is, the user must enter all the network components by hand, placing its server, client computers, and circuits on the diagram and defining what each is Okay, so for example, uh, 10 base T or the frame relay circuit, which is nearly obsolete with a 1 Mbps committed information rate. Okay. So other tools can discover the existing network. Okay, so we can use these uh, protocols called uh, the Cisco Discovery Protocol or the CDP or the LLDP, which is used for open or non-Cisco uh, equipment. Okay, so that is once installed on the network, they will explore the network to draw a network diagram. In this case, the user provides some starting point and the modeling software explores the network and automatically draws the diagram itself. So once the diagram is complete, the user can then change it to reflect the new network design. So obviously, a tool that can perform network discovery by itself is most helpful when the network is being designed okay or upgrade okay to an existing network and when the network is very complex so once the network design is complete the next step is to add information about expected network traffic and see if the network can support the level of traffic okay that can be generated over the network so simulation a mathematical technique in which the network comes to life and behaves as it would under real conditions is used to model the behavior of the communication network. Applications and users generate and respond to the messages while the simulator uh, track the number of packets in the network and delays encountered at each point on the network. Okay, so we can use these tools okay, for the testing of the network design. So some tools being generated and used our packet tracer boson you also have um, gns3 and a lot of tools available online okay now once the simulation is complete the user can examine the results to see the estimated response times throughput it is important to note that these network design tools provide only estimates which may vary from the actual results okay so at this bottlenecks or at this point, the user can change the network design in an attempt to eliminate this traffic or bottlenecks and rerun the simulation. So good modeling tools, not only to produce simulation results, but also highlight potential trouble spots. Examples, uh, server circuits or devices that experience long response times. The very best tools offer suggestions on how to overcome problems that the simulation identified. Example, network segmentation, okay, increasing from T1 to T3, increasing from the current capacity to a new or better capacity. So there are lots of tools available that you can use for the simulations for the testing okay, of your network design. Okay, now. We come to an end of this phase two technology design and what are the deliverables okay so what do we need to produce under technology design so the key deliverable is a set of one or more physical network designs 
So most designers like to prepare several physical designs so that they can trade or trade off technical benefits. For example, performance against cost. So in most cases, the critical part of the design of the network circuits and devices. Okay, so in some case, or in case uh, we have a new network design from the scratch, for instance, no. So it is also important to define the client computers with care because this will form a large portion of the total cost of the network. Usually, however, the network will replace an existing network and only a few of the client computers in the existing network will be upgraded okay so on the needs analysis our output is a logical design now in the technology design our output is a physical design all right so here's an example of the technology design deliverable okay so earlier on we have just the implementation of the EIA TIA wiring standards on the building okay so this time we have now these the specific connections okay of the work area so these are the work area here and we have the telecommunication closest for each of the work area maybe okay so that's based on the design here and this telecommunication closest or switches here are directly connected to the core on the lower um, ground of the building connected to the router going to the campus core backbone okay so we have here a detailed physical network design as a deliverable of technology design okay okay now that we're done with needs analysis technology design the last phase of the building block approach is the cost assessment okay so what do you have on cost assessment? So the purpose of this step is to assess the cost of various physical network design alternatives produced in the previous step. The main items are the cost of the software, hardware, and circuits. These three factors are all interconnected and must be considered along with the performance reliability required. So all factors are interrelated with regard to cost. Okay. So estimating the cost of a network is quite complex because many factors are not immediately obvious. Okay. So some of the costs must be considered are this. Okay. So what are this? Circuit costs, internet working devices, costs, and so on. Okay. So let's start with circuit costs, including costs of circuits provided by common carriers or the cost of purchasing and installing your own cable. Okay. Your UTP, your fiber optic cable that is part of the circuit costs all right your connection to the isp is also classified to be under circuit costs okay so next is internetworking devices so this includes switches routers firewalls okay bridges that you're going to use on your network design so these are the intermediary devices all right so the next one is the hardware cost hardware costs includes servers computers, okay, workstations, the NICs or the network interface cards, the memory printers, UPS, and maybe your backup storage. That is part of the hardware costs. Okay. So software costs, if we are going to base this on legalities, okay, and authenticity of the software, then this is the said to be the costly part. Okay. This is the most expensive component under the network design okay the software costs for network includes operating systems the application software that will be used in the network and some middlewares okay you also have the network management costs so network management cost includes special hardware software and training needed to develop a network management system for ongoing redesign monitoring and diagnosing of problems okay so you also have test and maintenance costs okay so cost for special monitoring equipment and software plus the cost of on-site spare parts and the last one is operational costs okay so the cost to operate the network okay the request for proposal so that is under the operational costs
So including the salary of the personnel maintaining and operating your network. That's under operations costs also. All right. Okay. So next is under the cost assessment is the request for proposal. Okay. So although some network components can be purchased off the shelf. Okay. So most organizations develop a request for proposal making large network purchases. Okay. Now RFPs or request for proposal specifies what equipment, software, and services are designed or desired and ask vendors to provide their best prices. Okay. So some requests for proposal are very specific about the items and that are to be provided in what time frame. In other cases, items are defined as mandatory, important, and desirable, or several scenarios are provided and the vendor is asked to propose the best solution. So in few cases, RFPs specifically or generally what is required and the vendors are asked to, to propose their own network designs. Okay. So we have here an example content, okay, of the request for proposal. Okay. So basically, once the vendor have submitted their proposal, the organization evaluates them against the specified criteria and select the winners. Okay. So I mean the, who won the bidding process. So depending on the scope and complexity of the network, it is sometimes necessary to redesign the network on the basis of the information in the vendor's proposal. Okay. So one of the key decisions in the request for proposal process is the scope of the request for proposal. Will you use one vendor or several vendors for all the hardware, software, and services? So multi-vendor okay, environments tend to provide better performance because it is unlikely that one vendor makes the best hardware, software, and services in all categories. So the multi-vendor networks also tend to be less expensive because it is likely that one vendor will always have the cheaper or the cheapest hardware, software, and services in all the product categories. Okay, so the request for proposal includes this background information, which includes uh, organizational profile, the overview of the current network, the overview of the new network, and the goals of the new network. The network requirements, okay, is also there. The choice of set of possible uh, possible network designs, noted as mandatory, desirable, and wishlist items, security and control requirements, response time requirements, and guidelines for proposing a new network designs. The service requirements, the implementation time plan, training courses and materials, and support services, reliability, and performance guarantees. Okay. So also included is, of course, the bidding process. Okay. So time schedule for the bidding process, the ground rules, bid evaluation criteria, and the availability of the additional information. Okay. And information required from vendors. So vendor, corporate profile, experience with similar networks, uh, hardware and software benchmarking, reference lists. So as I mentioned earlier, the multi-vendor environments can be more difficult to manage. However, if equipment is not working properly and it is provided by two different vendors, so each can blame uh, the other for the problem. In contrast, a single vendor is solely responsible for everything. And in reality, in the network design, so we do not adopt a single vendor uh, network. Okay, so because we don't want to... We don't want our network to be monopolized by one vendor or single vendor. Okay, so as much as possible, almost all organizations okay are using an open systems. Okay, so they are not after proprietary wherein they have to pay charges, okay, with the software, hardware, and so on, including supports. Okay, now, so this is a big challenge for you becoming a network designer or maybe a network administrator wherein you are going to sell the proposal to the management. So how will you convince the organization to support your proposal of building a new network? Okay. 
So an important hurdle to clear in the network design is obtaining the support of the senior management. All right. So gaining acceptance from the senior management lies in speaking their language and presenting the design in terms of easily understandable issues. Okay. So one tip is that when you are selling your proposal to the management, you have to use the layman's term. You have to use the term okay, that is used on their level. If, if you're presenting it on a business level, then you have to use uh, terms like how will the organization benefit from it? Okay, so what are the return of investments? What are the impacts of this proposal to the production or to the income of the organization? So that's how you present it to them. Do not present technical matters on these people because they don't want it. All right. So these technical people only wants how can we increase the profit of the organization? So you have to answer that way. Do not give them, ah, we, 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 we can improve the income or the profit of the organization by proposing this Ethernet. Okay, so something like uh, we will be using the fiber optic technology. What are those? All right. So what I'm saying is when you are selling the proposal to the management, you have to use terms that is understandable on their level. Okay. So rather than focusing on technical issues such as upgrading to Giga Ethernet, it is better to make a business case by focusing on the organization's needs and goals such as comparing the gross in the network use with the gross in the network budget. Okay. So one of the main problems in network design is obtaining the support of the senior management. Okay. So that's always the challenge. That's what I'm saying. So to management, the network is simply a cost center. Okay, something on which the organization is spending a lot of money with a little apparent change. Now, the network keeps on running just as it did the year before. So, the key to gaining the acceptance of the senior management lies in speaking the management language. That's what I'm saying earlier. Okay, so it is pointless to talk about upgrades from 100 Mbps to 1 gigabit. What's the sense of that? I can't understand that as a boss. Okay, on the network backbone because this terminology is meaningless from the business perspective. Okay, so a more compelling argument is to discuss the growth in the network use. For example, a simple graph that shows the network usage growing at 25% per year compared with the network budget growing at 10% per year presents a powerful illustration that the network costs are well managed and not out of normal okay so that's how we convince our superior okay so likewise a focus on network reliability is an easily understandable issue for example so if the network supports a mission critical system such as order processing or moving point of sale data from retail stores to corporate offices it is clear from a business perspective that the network must be available and performing properly or the organization will lose revenue all right so that's how we sell it to the uh to the management okay so we should have the power to persuade all right so it's very hard to persuade people especially the bosses okay so that's why you have to speak on their language you have to speak the business way or the business level all right so don't give them two technical matters two technical uh, terms what is that right now what are the deliverables under this space okay so there are three key deliverables for this step so the first is the request for proposal that goes to potential vendors all right that's the first one the second deliverable after the vendor has been selected it is or is the revised physical network diagram with a technology design complete so exact products and costs are specified at this point. Okay, so for example, we will be talking about the port density of the switches. When you say port density, how many ports are there? Would it be 16 or 24 ports or 48 ports and so on? All right. So the third deliverable is the business case that provides support to the network design expressed in business objectives. All right. So this is very important. So everything you do in a business, it should be in accordance with the business objectives. All right. 
So that's it. Okay. So we have reached the end of this video lecture. I hope you have learned something new today. Have a great day and thank you for watching and listening.